Boom, there's one on the planer board, guys. Look at that rod go. Look at that rod go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. That's a takedown. That's a takedown. All right, folks, I'm set up and making a drift down through here in the same area that I caught a 58-pounder in recently. Uh, there's a video I'll put you a link to that you can check out. 58-pounder is my biggest one of the year, uh, or at least one of the top two. I think we had ones in the 50s on a guy trip uh, but anytime on this lake you get fish in that size range uh it's a fish of the year so uh great fish but i'm drifting the same area something's different today though uh we are our wind is 180 degrees to where it was on the day i caught that fish uh i was going that way i'm going this way today so we got to change there i got the same baits though um i've got perch on one side of the boat i did add planer boards today just to get a little wider spread in my setup. And uh, I've got chicken on the other side of the boat. Now, the big fish, they came on chicken. So uh, I think that day I had five fish, three of them came on chicken with the biggest, obviously the most, av the average weight was higher. So, uh, but I'm drifting kind of the same area. I just kind of come up out here and hit it blind. Uh, water's a little bit clearer uh, than where I put in at. The area that I put in at had some really dingy looking water. So I've got some semi-clear water. There's bait in the area. Our water temps are, Eh, they're about 52 and a half degrees. So it's a little colder than it was on that day. Not much, only by a degree or so. So I'm making a drift through here. Got a pretty good breeze. Got the big Easterland drift sock out in the water to slow me down. Cruising along at about 0.4. Got a trolling motor to hold me straight. You can hear the winds picking up as we speak. But uh, we're gonna make a pull through here and just see what's in here. Do some prospecting and see if I can find some fish. Guys, I think I got a small fish going right here on this chicken i don't even know if that fish is on there no nah, i don't think so it was a very weak bite i'm gonna check the bait uh, it was just popping a little bit almost like it was a channel cat bite i'm gonna reel it in and check the bait on it i hate to leave these things out too long chicken uh it's almost like threadfin shad it'll get pulled off of there very easily bait looks good looks like it's good to go i'm gonna get it cast back out again i've got everything on the port side of the boat with chicken Everything on this side, starboard side with uh, uh, perch. And uh, we're just gonna see what happens. Like I said, I got a couple planter boards out just to widen the spread through here. And uh, let's see if, uh, see if there's any biting fish. Boom guys, got one going right there. It looks like, oh yeah, that. He's on a piece of perch. We got one on the perch. We got here. Man, I have covered a lot of water trying to get bit. And it ain't happened. This is not a monster, but it is not a small fish. I've covered a lot of water. I made that first drag probably about an hour. Had what I thought to be a bite. Oh, he's on top of the water. And then, uh, that was it. Let's see if I can work him with this side of the sock. Where's he going to? I think he's going to the other side. Let's take him on the other side. There we go. We've got him straight up and down underneath the boat now. I've got planer boards out on both sides. This one was one of the rods that was straight out the back of the boat. So, let's work him over to this side a little bit here. There we go. Straight up and down, baby. So if we see him, don't see him yet. I'll try and in this one, just for the heck of it. Oh, that's a good fish. It's a good fish. Easy, easy. Slime cat reel, slime cat rod, Andy. 30 pound monofilament. Boom, that's a good fish. That one there, guys, looks like a perch head. Nice. I'm in the boat, good fish. Don't roll up in that net. Don't roll up in that net. There you go. Head off of there. 
down about my thumb. Good fish. There he is. Look at that. It's blue. It's blue there biting on my finger. Pretty fish. Yes, guys. Finally got us one. Back in the water. Get a good shot of it. Boom! Back alive for you to catch. Right there's the rig, guys. Got me a perch head on there. Eight alt Gamagatsu circle hook. Got me a big float. I run some bigger ones on my bigger baits. And then a Bone Town catfishing sinker to match the cork and uh, match the uh, slime cat rod. So uh, got a good little color combination going on there. I don't think it has anything to do with it, but it looks cool. All right, guys, that was a good one. Uh, I've been fishing for, I don't know, probably two hours. And that's the first fish that I put in the boat. I had that one bite and that was it. Uh, this one came on a perch head, one of the bigger baits, which is typically what I expect to catch fish on this time of the year. I've still got the chicken out to see what gets hit and see what we catch. But, uh, you know, wind's picking up a little bit here. I'm out toward the, right before the river channel. I'm within a mile of the river channel here, uh, just where it starts to really open up, a little bit bigger water. This is the biggest creek on Lake Wiley, so uh, it's, a, it's a big opening here. Uh, deep water, we're in, you know, close to 40 feet of water. And just making a pull out through here, I'm gonna try this for a little bit, see what we get, then maybe readjust and try something over toward the river channel. It's not on fire, catching one fish doesn't make a pattern. Uh, so uh, just gonna do some experimenting around here. It's kind of the way it was the other day. Uh, not a lot of fish being caught. Uh, and you kind of have to be okay with that this time of the year in the winter time. Uh, Cause you're kind of really, you know, you're looking for big fish and uh, numbers just aren't gonna happen. And uh, I'm just trying to, you know, be patient. That's the hardest thing uh, for even for me. I like I like seeing rods being. So I'm uh, just trying to be patient, cover some water, and uh, just see if we can dial in where the fish are. Boom! There's one on the planer board, guys. Look at that rod go! Look at that rod go! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Oh yeah, baby! Oh yeah! That's a takedown. That's a takedown. Woo! Nice, that looked good. That looked good. That thing kind of bopped around for a second. I was sitting there watching it and it was kind of tink, tink, and then boom, it went. So I don't know if another little fish had it and then a big fish came in and ate it or what the deal was, but it went, boom. This is my first good fish on this rod. This is the uh, Catfish Pro rod and reel. Just got this, just had it out on that last trip where I caught the 58. Didn't catch it on this. Uh, I think I had one small fish on it, so it'll be nice to uh, get a better fish on it. I'm going to get this perch rod out of the way again. I'm tempted to pull this thing out of the water completely because it's getting in the way more than anything. That up there. There we go. Let's see if we can work this puppy up here. Looks like a decent fish. I think he's about like the last one. Maybe I'm on to something here. Uh, I just caught that fish five minutes ago, so maybe uh, maybe this is the magic combo. We'll see. I'm gonna try get this off of there, just to make landing this fish easier. Like I said, I've told you guys, this is not the best way to do this. So you have to be able to get it off and then load the rod up. Not something I advise doing if you. Want to 100% get the fish in the boat. Just uh, pop the clip loose and let the board go on down. This is a chicken bait. It's on the port side. We may have a fan club showing up here. Let's see what we got. Like I said, we're in 40 feet of water. It's about 52 and a half out here also. No big change little dingier water in here. You can tell the color's a little more stained. Let's see if we can work this puppy up here and get a look at it. This may be where these fish are. We'll see. This rod ready to, or net ready to go.
like I said, my first fish with any weight, there's color. There is some color. Oh, get him there. Okay. That fish is in the net, guys. Let's uh, get him in the boat here. See what it looks like. Another one about the same size. About the same size. Might be a little bit smaller. We're dealing with here. Looks like that sucker took the cork and all when he hit it. I got that thing smashed up. I need to get a new cork on that one. I had been milking the life out of that one. Put that up there. Don't bite my thumb. There we go. Yeah, a little smaller than the last one. Good looking blue cat. Oh, winter blues. Love it. Fish. Good fish, guys. Find the catch. That one in the water. Yeah, bait's gone on that one. That was a piece of chicken. Same rig, Santee rig. Just got a uh, peg float on there, what's left of it. Man, that thing's been through. I'm gonna keep fishing it. I'm gonna keep putting it out there and keep dragging it. Why? And for some reason it keeps working. I also think these odd shaped ones when they get beat up, flutter in the water. Make a little vibration movement, who knows? Put a piece of chicken on it, another Bone Town catfishing sink. Here's my drifting weights today. And again, this Catfish Pro Rod, it's a uh, medium action, seven foot six length, and one of their reels. Man, that was a good takedown on that rod. I like that, that's some good action on there. Loaded up pretty good. Uh, like I said, that was on a planer board uh, with chicken, off the chicken side of the boat. We got one apiece now. Not on fire as far as numbers and volume of fish go, but uh, as far as size goes, those are nice fish, above average fish here. Uh, I'm continuing to drag this. Probably what I'm going to do, I've got a little place up here. I may run into some land that I'm going to hit. So we'll see what the wind does with me here. I may have to reset, but I'm probably going to come back through that area. I may run back up, reset a little bit. So I got a little better line here coming out of here with the way the wind's blowing me. Uh, I got the big drift sock, like I said, out the back doing about a half a mile an hour and a six rod spread i mean that's a great way to cover water you can fish more rods you can fish left uh, less but uh covering the water pretty good it does look like the way i'm going with the wind i'm going to hit this uh island over here so i'm probably gonna have to reset here but give this just a little bit see what happens reset come do the same area maybe this is where the fish are it's not on fire by any means but after two hours of fishing to put two fish in the boat in less than 20 minutes well it leaves me at least a little bit optimistic all right guys what we're doing is rolling up onto this point here we kind of made a drag down through here earlier we're going to roll up onto this point come down off of this see if we can find some fish in here all right guys you can see the sun starting to go down below the trees over here uh we only got a little bit of time left i'm gonna get me a new bait put new bait on all the rods and uh get them dragging see if we can get one more before it gets dark Knock the scales off this sucker. I always like to get the scales off of them. Like it spreads a little more scent. At least I think it does. I don't know if it really does. Put out a couple of big baits. Put a big head, big side. Oh, yeah. Good to go there. One of my bigger bait rods here. Let's put this old perch head on there. The old perch head. Got me a big float to float it up off with. I float it up off the bottom. I'll catch a whopper on that. If you believe in big bait for big fish, that right there is the bait. There's some new ones on there. What a bang. Make sure that tip's exposed. Gotta have that tip exposed. That one right there. It's good to go. Knock these in gear. Boom, boom. Let's see. Put our planers on our Catfish Pro rods. Get them old pieces off. Now, these pieces aren't super, duper huge. I don't use super huge baits on this chicken stuff. And I think that has more to do with the reason they're feeding on it than anything. This one out there with a the planer. Fade off. 
Stick it back on there. But a bang. Pow. Look at that go, man. Look at that rod. Look at that rod. Woo! <laughs> I love it. Finagling, get around everything. Kind of been doing some crabbing with the boat to avoid this island. I was going to try to avoid get that thing wriggled up. There you go. Avoid having to move and reset. I'm going to be able to do it. Let's see, get over to this other side. Manhandle this fish over to this side of the boat. This came on perch side, guys. This came on the perch. What I'm trying to do is wrangle this thing around the drift sock just right back there. Get it over to this side of the boat where I can land it a little easier. Doesn't feel big now. I think the hit was better than the fish. Let's see here. Let's see. Boom! Man. Oh, he was way bigger than he is. Oh well. If I was eating some today, that'd be one. Right there. Fish. Well guys, if you want to learn how to catch fish when the fishing is tough, sometimes that means picking up and moving. Uh, covering water if you're in a boat. Uh, whether you do that by drifting, running to a different part of the lake, uh, part of a river, a different creek arm up on the bank, uh, you know, whatever it takes to cover some water. Another thing, if you're trying to catch fish, uh, when the fishing stuff and you're on the bank, sometimes you just got to move. And that can be tough on bank anglers because many times for most people fishing on the bank, you're limited in where you can go and how much access you've got. Uh, sometimes it means casting your bait out as far as you can get it in the deeper water. Sometimes it means casting it up and down the bank. And sometimes it means loading up and going somewhere else. Uh, just parking a bait in the water and hoping something comes to it generally is not going to produce a lot of fish or a better bite or a better catch rate. You'll catch some fish maybe, eventually something may eat it, but you're kind of just doing what I call park it and pray. So if you want to get onto a consistent bite and a steady bite, and you're trying to learn how to do that when it's tough. It, it, it's covering water and changing places. But again, it doesn't always happen. And that's the thing you got to keep in mind and don't beat yourself up over. I've heard that from a lot of people here in the winter. I get messages and they're like, man, I just can't catch any fish like I did. Well, depending on where you're at, depending on water temperatures, uh, depending on what kind of area you're fishing, it may just be bad. It may just be a bad time to catch fish. Fish may be pulled deeper. You may not have access to deep water if you're bank fishing. Uh, you know, if you're in a boat, it's a matter of finding them sometimes. And they're not always deep. That's the other thing. Um, now, the fish we caught today were not exactly in the deepest part of this lake. So, a lot of times, it's just moving, you know, you know, pick a place, stick it for a while, pick, stick, pick and stick. Just go try some different stuff, move around. Uh, but be okay with knowing that you're not always going to put fish in a boat or pull them up on the bank. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.